Welcome to the video. In this video, I want to talk about the Bonsai Wing. Now, the Bonsai is one that I've been interested in a while, and we are huge fans of the Texuma Wing already. As you can see, we have a couple. This is part of our collection, and the reason we end up with so many is very repairable. So I'll come back from the field one day with one of these things in several pieces, and on the way home, typically order a replacement, and then by the time I get home, I'll have a crack at it with the hot glue and some tape, and 10 minutes later, it'll be back in one piece. So then it end up with another wing. Now we have one set up for FPV, one has an APM for autonomous flight, and the other one is just set for out and out speed and aerobatics. The reason I'm interested in the Bonsai is because it's a baby version of the Texumo, and the Texumo, although it's a nice big stable wing, very agile, super fun to fly, isn't great in smaller confined spaces like indoors or in smaller outdoor areas like parks. It just always feels like it's a little bit too close. The other reason I want to have a look at the Bonsai is I'm interested in when it's all set up and flying, is it below the FAA limit? Because if we want to start doing things like adding FPV equipment on here, is this something that our friends in America can put together and fly without having to go through the registration? I need to say a very big thank you to Simon and the team at Hogby King for sending us the Bonsai to try. Uh, this has been something I've been trying to get my hands on for a while, and with all of the popular models, you have to kind of catch it when it comes into stock, because when it does come into stock, it invariably sells out nice and quickly. So in this video, we're going to talk about three or four things. First, I'm going to go through the setup of how I've got mine configured. Everybody has their own way of setting it up for their own flying style. This just happens to be the way that works for us, but I'll go through the equipment that I'm using on my wing and that way if you want to copy what we're doing here you can just get all these pieces while you're ordering the wing. Then I'll go through some of the adaptations that I've done. Uh, based on my experience with the Texumo, the larger wings, particularly with some of the spectacular crashes I've been having, I've taken some of those lessons across when I was building my bonsai. Now in reality I don't think I probably needed to make all those changes just because the bonsai is so much lighter, so the mass and energy in, the, in a crash isn't enough to do the same kind of damage, but I've done them anyway, and I'll talk you through what I've done. Then we'll have a quick chat about the flying experience, what it's like. So I'm particularly going to reference it to the Texumo. So for all of you Texumo pilots out there who were like me and wondering whether it was worthwhile getting one, we'll answer it there, and then we'll finish with the summary. So the first thing we'll talk about then is what is actually on this thing. Well, mine is running with a Multistar 2118 3100 kV motor, and that is spinning a 5 by 4.3 inch prop. The challenge with this is that the adapter that comes with the motor for the prop it doesn't fit the prop that I've got here. I ended up actually going and ordering a separate little prop adapter that fits the two millimeter shaft that's on the Multistar 2118 kV motor. I also had a four millimeter plug that then fitted beautifully into that prop. It also seems to be working nicer because I've lost a little bit of that mass from the aluminium spinner at the back of the craft which has helped me with my center of gravity too. I'm running it with a simple little 500 milliamp hour 2S Zippy battery. Um, the 2S setup gives me plenty of power. It'll still do acrobatics and zooming around. Uh, it'll go very floaty and it will also have a nice turn of speed and go vertical as well. And on that battery, if I'm poodling around, I can get anything up to nearly 13, 14 minutes. If I'm flying more throttle full out all the time, then I'm down at kind of nine or 10 minutes. But to get that from such a little battery is pretty impressive, but that shows you how light this thing actually is. We're running a little ESC as well. Again, it doesn't have to be particularly big or particularly fancy. I've managed to fit all the electronics under this little black cover that I've printed, and we'll talk about that in a sec, uh, but it took a little bit of effort. Uh, having a little speed controller absolutely helped, but I ended up with, even with the R615X little DSM receiver, I ended up taking it out of its case and also desoldering a lot of the pins and soldering the cables directly onto the throttle control and also onto the servos out in the wings as well. But by doing that, it made a really clean install and it all fitted underneath. We're using little 
five gram servos out in the wing, absolutely bog basic HXT 500 style, and they're performing beautifully. They don't have to be amazing servos for a little wing like this. I'm finding that these little cheap and cheerful five gram servos are working beautifully. They're just the plastic geared ones. And even with my attempts at aerobatics and a couple of the little hiccups and bumps I've had with the model, they've coped beautifully and worked every time. So let's talk about some of the adaptations that I have made to this wing coming from the Texumo. First thing I'm gonna talk about are the winglets. Now to put this wing together is a piece of cake compared with the Texumo. The way the Texumo arrives is that the two halves of the wing are separated. So you need to join them together and glue carbon fiber spars across and then you stick the winglets on the end. The little bonsai is small enough that it comes in one box and when you open it, all you need to do is just glue the winglets onto each end and install your electronics and you're ready to rock and roll. The challenge with the Texumo with the larger winglets is whenever it seems to go into a tree, the tree wants to take a bite out of one of my winglets and I end up having to hot glue the piece back in. So what I've done is I've designed, just like with the Texumo, some winglet protectors. And these are little thin ABS bumpers that you can hot glue onto the front of the winglets and they stop them getting ripped and destroyed if your bonsai goes into a tree or a bush. The other thing which we've already had a look at is the electronics cover. Again, all of these things are on Thingiverse if you want to have a go at downloading and printing them. Um, I like the electronics cover. It just stops all of the rubbish getting stuck into the receiver and the speed controller, particularly as I wanted to have everything nice and neat and I've removed the cover off things like the receiver, I do need an extra bit of mechanical protection so that nothing's gonna flick in there and cause a problem. I have a little cable clip behind the electronics cover just to keep the cables out of the way to stop them snagging. Occasionally you do find that in the event of a bad crash or coming in over grass uh, with the larger wings that occasionally the grass will catch one of the cables and pop it out. I do like to have leading edge protection. I think this is probably overkill on the bonsai, having flown it for a little while. And the leading edge protection in this case is just clear tape. If you're having problems sticking tape onto a wing like this, I use the clear tape from Gorilla. And uh, what I also do is I spread a little bit of glue along the area where I want to put the tape on let that glue go hard and then the what's happening is the tape is sticking to that glue because occasionally with this kind of expanded foam it will lift a little bit. Now amazingly with all the electronics installed and the battery this little thing is only 159 grams so it is exceptionally light which means we potentially do have an extra little bit of space and room if we wanted to add FPV equipment. So this could easily become an FPV vehicle that would fall below the FAA weight requirements. So that is great to know. Flying, well, this video is me flying out on the field in quite a windy day. We have uh, 10 to 12 mile an hour winds and the little wing, because of its weight, is getting blown about a bit more than I'm used to if I'm flying something like a Texumo. Texumos do get caught by the wing. But they're a little bit bigger, they're a little bit heavier. They're not buffeted as much. This little thing is flying and flipping around and I'm having a whale of a time. So this is definitely not a model that you want to fly in anything apart from a light breeze outside, unless you want to have the fun kind of fighting and playing with the wind. And actually this is really fun to fly and with the flips and rolls and everything else that I'm doing here and kind of fighting with the wind that we've got. So in summary, what do I think? Well, I wasn't sure about the bonsai. Having so many Texumo wings and loving them, I wasn't sure how much of a sacrifice it would be to go down to a smaller wing. But I have found that the smaller wing is easy to kind of keep in the back of the car and to transport around when you're comparing it to something like a larger wing to the Texumo. It still provides all of the fun of a larger wing and now I know that it's well below that FAA limit. For those of you that want to, you could add a 3S more powerful setup and have it as a little FPV racing wing as well. So if you're a Texumo pilot and you've been thinking about this, my recommendation is get one. They're fantastic fun and you can fly them in those places where you think that the Texumo might be a little bit too big. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe 
and happy flying.